Billy, obviously uh, things things didn't go your way last time you stepped in the cage. First UFC loss, I guess. What do you what did you uh, what did you take out of that one? Yeah, John, you look so excited to say that. Uh, yeah, you know it was a tough loss, uh, but you know I was on a nine fight winning streak, including a pro boxing match, and uh, it seemed like everything was going great. And then losing, uh, it, you know, it was, a, it was a good wake up call. It was a good thing that it, it gave me a chance to look back on my other training camps and kind of nitpick at what I was doing. And there was a, a, a lot of stuff that I was able to address and, and kind of correct. I've had seven months since that fight, and you're going to see a new and improved Billy Q, and I can't wait. Nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the time off, the seven months. Was that by design? I mean, did you want to take a little time after the loss to, to work on things? Uh, yes and no. There was a few things I had to get done. I was cornering one of my teammates in Abu Dhabi in January, uh, and then I was getting married in March. So I didn't really want to be in a training camp necessarily in that time frame. So that kind of started that off. And, it, it, you know, it's a good thing to do. I don't think uh, it's great to rush into a fight after a loss, and especially having a fight that I could I could look back on and, like, you know, you got to work on this, you got to do this, you got to do this. It was – I think it was a good thing. And – I think it was a, you're, like I said, you're going to see a whole new uh, competitor in there. And it, I did come off a loss, but I still got to look at, you know, I've been pretty successful in the UFC so far. And to be four and one after this fight, you know, three finishes is, is what I'm going for. And uh, I'll still be proud of that after this fight. I was going to say, is there almost a danger? Because you're right. I mean, the losses are great because it does force you to analyze things. But is there also a danger in going like, hey, we don't need to get away from everything. Like some, some things were going really well. Of course, of course. And, you know, like I was saying, it, 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 when you're winning like that, it was almost to the point where I was taking fights on, I was taking fights quickly, you know, right after the Kyle Nelson fight, Gavin Tucker mentioned me again. I was like, all right, let's do it. You know, and it was, I only had like a, a six week training camp for that. I wasn't in the best of shape when, when training camp started, uh, you know, not to make excuses. He, you know, he whooped my butt that day. And, uh, but now that I have, I've had a, a lot of time to get ready for this fight, even, you know, I was supposed to fight Herbert Burns, and they still gave me another six, five or six weeks to get ready for uh, Benitez. So it's been a, just a great training camp. I came into the, I started off training camp probably in the best shape that I've ever been in, and right now it's, I'm, I'm definitely in the best shape that I've ever gone into a fight. Nice. Change of opponent, like you said, like plenty of time to repair, but uh, the change, did, did, you, did you like the matchup more? Did you, did you like the other one before? I mean, did it change anything in terms of, like, your excitement level for it? Um, I just think they – I think stylistically they're completely different. Uh, Benitez being a lefty striker, you know, boxer, uh, and uh, Herbert Burns is a right-handed guy who just wants to get the fight to the floor. Uh, stylistically, I think they're completely different, but for me – Basically, whoever the UFC gave me, I was going to fight. The excitement level, I think, is a little bit more uh, – I definitely got a little more excited for this fight just because I think it has the potential to be a fight of the night. Obviously, I would rather take a performance of the night, go out there and take him out and get the win. But I think Herbert is more of a, you know, a ground specialist. He wants to get the fight to the ground. Fans don't always enjoy that as much, where uh, Benitez, I think I'm going to have my option whether I want to strike them, if I want to take it to the floor, and he's, he's usually pretty exciting. You know, he's a high-level striker. He puts on a show. He wants to keep it on the feet. I definitely know that, and uh, I, I think it has a, a, a more excitement level for the fans. Yeah. Any concerns at all about him making weight, or, or can you let yourself think about that? Uh, you know... It, 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 it's not really a concern, but it's just it's something obviously to think about. You know, his last fight, I think he missed weight by like four, you know, four or five pounds, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, we got to make a decision as a team if he does miss weight, if we're going to take the fight, which I, I hate saying no. So, you know, we most likely will unless it's like that again. If it's that by that much, you know, who knows? Uh, but, you know, that's on him. We just got to make sure my team is we got to make sure we're doing doing everything right making sure our, our weight comes off good and i've never missed weight before so i don't think it's gonna be an issue for us you know, not to spend too much time on it, but it's funny because right i think it was so unique because people don't normally turn down fights because exactly that like nobody wants to turn it down right but do you think it's something people should consider more of i mean if a guy's four or five pounds over that's pretty significant yeah, and uh, I don't know exactly the numbers. I saw someone on Twitter mention it after this last fight that they said, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but they said most of the time the person that misses weight usually wins the fight. Uh, and it's probably not coinc coincidental. Uh, so, 
it is interesting because you, you know we do we put this whole work all this work into this whole training camp uh i can't believe you can't, someone could come in that much overweight like i'll do whatever it takes to make weight and and at least get a little bit closer so i don't know what his issues were last fight but i'm sure he's been thinking about it a lot for this fight so i, I don't think he's gonna have an issue with it but uh if he does we'll, we'll cross that road when we get there nice uh win here what's the plan i mean uh, like you said you took some time off had some uh, you know great things in life but it, it, do, you, do you feel like you need to make up for lost time or stay busy what's what's the plan uh, I definitely want to fight against fight again at least one more time this year. Um, we actually, my wife, who I got married to in March, we uh, have a honeymoon plan next week. So we're going to the Virgin Islands next week and have a nice little vacation. And then after this, you know, since this is my fifth fight at the Apex, I'll do, I'll fight whoever, do whatever I can do to fight on U.S. soil with fans. So I'm definitely eyeing that November card at Madison Square Garden. That would be a dream come true. Growing up in Buffalo, you know, that was always a, a huge venue. Uh, but if they want me to fight sooner, I could probably probably be ready sooner, depending on how this fight goes. Uh, you know, getting getting all banged up. So really, the biggest goal for me is just to fight with fans, since you know I grew up watching the UFC. Having fans there has always been a goal, and to have five fights in the in that apex, it's just been you know pretty crazy. Nice. Last thing for me. Uh, I mean, you said I think a lot of people have this one circled as potential fight of the night. So when you when you play this one out in your head, I mean, I'm sure you'd like to go, you know, throw one punch and be done. But did, what, what kind of fight do you think we're gonna see? Yeah, I think it's going to I think we're both going to be pretty banged up after this one. You know, he's a super aggressive fighter. He's hard to take out. I'm super hard to take out too. I've only been finished once. And it seems like every fight he's in, you know, he comes out throwing super aggressive. So you're going to see that from me too. I'm trying to take his head off early, trying to hurt him first. And uh, I definitely just see one of those, you know, bang out fights where we're both throwing bombs at each other. And uh, I can see it going in later rounds, but I'm definitely looking for that early finish. If he gets too aggressive, I definitely can see myself taking him out early. Hey, Billy. Hey, what's up, Amy? How are you? Got a question for you. Awesome. Um, when you have an opponent change, do you change, change up your game plan, or are you one that has a game plan for no matter the opponent? Um, yeah, well, we, we kind of had to switch up the game plan a little bit for this fight just because stylistically – both guys are so different. You know, Herbert Burns just wants to take you, you know, right to the the ground. So I actually enjoyed the training camp because the first half of it, we were doing a ton of wrestling, ton of jujitsu. You know, we were doing some striking. And then when the opponent changed, we're doing a lot more, uh, you know, striking, getting prepared for that southpaw. So we really worked everything. You know, you're always working a little bit of everything, but to really focus in on first grappling and then a lot more striking, you know, defense and offense, uh, it, it, it definitely changes things up a little bit. And we've seen um, an increase in the bone breaks just last weekend. <laughs> As a fighter, when you're watching that kind of stuff, do you like hesitate and go, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Oh, man, yeah, it's definitely, you know, this year has been pretty crazy with MMA injuries. I saw on, like, a local show a guy, like, lot, like his finger broke off completely and, and got, like, severed. Uh, and then you see all these leg breaks. It's just a reminder that anything can happen in there. And... But no, I'm still gonna. Uh, you know, it's still a fight. You you get all your weapons. I, I like to use. I like to use kicks. I like to throw punches. You know, I like to try to check kicks too. So, yes and no. It's a good reminder that anything could happen in there. But at the end of the day, when that bell rings, I'm still gonna try to use all my weapons to win the fight. My last one for you. You uh, mentioned on, I believe, Instagram that you want to be on the Sports Center top five. Ha. What are you going to do to get on the top five? Uh, you know, great question. Really, my whole style has always been be as exciting as possible. I understand that, you know, like I said, I grew up watching the UFC. I loved exciting fights. You know, you obviously can tell the difference between an exciting fight and a boring fight. I've always wanted to be one of those guys that you're like, oh, man, Billy Q's fighting. It's going to be, a, you know, you know, turn your TV on, turn the volume up. Uh, it's going to be an exciting fight. So I think just with my style, I'm just going to go out there and, and do what I've always tried to do, and that's put on an, an exciting show. It does feel a lot different at the Apex because it's kind of like quiet, and it feels a little bit more like a chess match, which with the fans, they really get me going. Uh, but I can, I can still use that, and I can still put on an exciting fight at the Apex. I've had a few good ones already. And just, just fighting my style, I think we'll, we'll get that top five, uh, sports in our top five because I got number six last time.